Let me show you how to change color in Photoshop. In this tutorial, we will work with five examples to help you learn everything you need to know about color, masking, and adjustment layers so you can easily change the color of anything and get realistic results. Check out the link in the description to download the images for this tutorial. Before we start, I would like to thank our sponsor MSI. I will work with the Creator Z16 laptop designed for creators. It works great with Adobe applications like Photoshop. Check out the link in the description to learn more about the Creator Z16. This is the first document that we will work with. It contains two layers, a photo of a room and a yellow circle, which is the color that we're going to reference for the color match. The goal in this example is to apply this yellow color to the couch. Before we get into that, we need to understand an essential concept about how color works inside the HSB color system. If you double click on the foreground color, the color picker will come up and you will be able to select any color you want. When you drag over the color gradient or the hue slider, you will notice that the values in the HSB boxes change depending on the color you select. HSB stands for Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, the three color components we need to understand to complete this advanced color matching technique. Hue is what color something is. Is it orange, green, blue, magenta, or red? Saturation is the intensity of that color, a vibrant red, or a completely desaturated gray. And brightness is how light or dark the color is. A combination of these components will make up all the colors that you see in Photoshop. In this example, we will match the hue and saturation of the yellow circle onto the couch. Then we're going to try to match the brightness as close as possible. It's important to note that you cannot match all the three components of the yellow color to the couch because you'll end up with a flat yellow color with no shape or detail. You need all the brightness levels, highlights, midtones, and shadows to give the couch its shape and texture. The first step when changing colors in Photoshop is to make a selection out of the object whose color you're going to change. In this case, the couch. From the toolbar, choose the object selection tool. Then from the options bar, make sure that you have object finder enabled. The object selection uses machine learning technology known as Adobe Sensei to analyze the image and find the main subjects. Then you can simply hover over the image, the couch will highlight in blue, and you can click to make a selection. If you're in an older version of Photoshop, you can instead use the quick selection tool and click and drag over the couch to select it. You can subtract from the selection if you inadvertently select an area you did not intend to select. I'll use the quick selection tool for that. It's currently enabled. And from the options bar, make sure that object subtract is enabled or better yet, you can hold Alt on Windows option on the Mac and click and drag over the areas you would like to deselect. You don't have to be precise. You can always fine tune the mask later. Next, from the Layers panel, click on this icon to create a group. You can name it Color Change. It's always good to name your layers and groups. Then, click on the Layer Mask icon to create a layer mask based on a selection. We're applying the mask to the group so that only one layer mask can control multiple adjustment layers. If you need to edit the mask, you will only have to do it once. Next, from the New Adjustment Layer icon, create a solid color fill layer and click on the yellow circle to apply that color. Then press OK. Currently, the yellow solid color fill layer is applying all three color components to the couch, the hue, saturation, and brightness, so it's completely flat. To solve this issue, you can use a blending mode to use the hue and saturation of the yellow color, but keep the brightness values of the couch. From the blending mode dropdown, you'll notice the four blending modes below this line. These blending modes control one or more color components, hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Select the color blending mode to apply both the hue and saturation of the yellow, but keep the brightness values of the layer below. Next, go into the new adjustment layer icon and create a levels adjustment layer to control the brightness of the couch. From the properties panel, you can use these five sliders to adjust the brightness values. Use the highlight slider to brighten the couch and the gamma slider, this midpoint slider, to increase the contrast. If you made an intense highlight on the cushions, you could drag the white point slider to the left to reduce it. This white point controls the brightest pixel of the image. If you drag it to the left, the brightest point will now be a light gray and not white. And as simple as that, we've made the couch yellow. Now let me show you why I didn't use the hue and saturation adjustment layer for this example. I'll collapse and disable the color change group, then hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click on the layer mask thumbnail to load the couch as a selection. 
Then I'll create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'll adjust the hue slider to get yellow. Then I'll increase the saturation. And this is where the problem arises. When you adjust the lightness slider to get the brighter yellow, you'll wash out the shadows of the couch, making it look very flat. Even if you click on the colorize checkbox and apply the proper hue and saturation, you will still have the same problem when you adjust the lightness. By splitting the components into two layers, you have complete control over the color and brightness, and you don't lose the shadows on the couch. This does not mean that the hue and saturation adjustment layer is useless. It could be quite useful in some circumstances, as you will see in this tutorial. Now let me show you how to change the color of a shirt to both white and black. We'll use a similar technique as before. First, we'll select the areas we want to adjust. Then we will create adjustment layers to target those areas. But this time, I'll use a quick selection tool to make my initial selection. I'll select the quick selection tool from the toolbar and I'll click and drag over the shirt. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to subtract from the selection as you drag. With the selection active, create a group. You can name it Color Change. Then click on the layer mask icon to create a mask based on the selection. Now from the new adjustment layer icon, create a levels adjustment layer. Then create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. From the properties panel, bring the saturation down to negative 100. Enable the levels adjustment layer. From the properties panel, drag the two top right sliders to the left to determine the brightness. Then, you can drag the bottom left slider to the right to determine how dark the darkest pixel should be. Off black will work great. Then, you can drag the bottom right slider to the left to determine how bright the brightest pixel should be. And off white will work in this case. And by the way, if you see something in this video that you enjoy or you think will help you in your projects, then click on the like button now or on the subscribe button. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I would really appreciate it if you did. Now let's change the levels adjustment layer to create a black shirt. You can click on the reset button to reset the levels adjustment layer and do the opposite. Drag the two top left sliders to the right to darken the shirt. Then you can use the two bottom sliders to determine how dark the darkest pixel will be and how bright the brightest pixel will be. With objects such as shirts, you'll rarely have pure black or pure white. By the way, you can use the same technique if you're starting either with a black or white shirt, but keep in mind that if the shadows and highlights are clipped, meaning that there is no information or detail in those areas, you will not be able to bring back the missing information. Let me show you an advanced example. Sometimes making selections by hand can be very difficult. In this case, the red plaid pattern is complicated to select using traditional selection tools. Instead, we will take advantage of the on image adjustment tool within the hue and saturation adjustment layer. But before we continue, I'll take just a minute to show you what the MSI Creator Z16 is all about. This beautiful yet powerful laptop is designed specifically for creatives. It has many incredible features, but three make the MSI Creator Z16 stand out from the rest. First, the Creator Z16 comes with the latest Intel 11th Gen Core i9 processor, giving you the power needed to satisfy your multitasking and pro-level Photoshop tasks. Second, the Creator Z16 laptops are powered by the GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs, which allows you to edit up to 8K HDR RAW video and work with large 3D models. And the third feature that makes the MSI Creator Z16 laptop stand out from the rest is the 16 by 10 display. This 4K touchscreen display has an aspect ratio that gives you an extra 10% room than the typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This extra room makes the workspace easier to see in Photoshop and other Adobe applications. Also, the Z16 has a DCI-P3 100% color gamut and displays are factory calibrated for the best out-of-the-box color accuracy. If you're not familiar with MSI, rest assured that it is a reputable company. This year, alongside Apple, they shared first place for overall satisfaction in the PC Mag Reader's Choice Awards. If you're looking for a new laptop that can handle Photoshop and all your creative tasks well, then check out the MSI Creator C16. It's the laptop that I'm currently using when I'm creating on the go. To learn more about the Z16, check out the link in the description. And now, back to this advanced method for changing color in Photoshop. Start by creating a human saturation adjustment layer. And from the properties panel, notice that the range is set to master. This setting will apply any adjustments to the entire image. But if you enable the on image adjustment tool, then hover over the red pattern and click, 
The range will now read reds. And the two gradients below will show you the range of colors that this adjustment layer is now affecting. The top gradient shows the original color, and the bottom gradient shows the color it becomes. They both look the same now because we haven't made any adjustments. The colors found within the two solid lines will completely change, and the colors between the solid line and the triangle will have a gradual transition. These ranges are editable. You can simply drag these icons to adjust the range. When you drag the HSL sliders, you will now only change the hue, saturation, and lightness of the selected range of colors and not the entire image. I'll select the zoom tool and zoom in. Notice that not all the red hues change. To fix this, you can increase the range of colors by dragging these sliders accordingly. Photoshop will then colorize the previously unaffected reds in the image. You can double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. One issue you'll probably encounter is that you will inadvertently change the color of something you did not intend to change, like the skin tones in this case. You can quickly fix this issue by creating a layer mask that only affects the red pattern. To do so, select the Hue and Saturation layer mask. From the Properties panel, click on the Invert button to make a black layer mask. With a layer mask, white reveals and black conceals, so a completely black mask will hide the entire colorization effect. You can then selectively paint the colorization effect in the areas you like. To do so, enable the brush tool from the toolbar and set white as your foreground color. Then use the bracket keys on the keyboard to adjust your brush size. You can find the bracket keys to the right of the letter P in North American keyboards. Now you can paint over any area that should be green. This is my result. You can now click on the Hue and Saturation Adjustment Layer thumbnail to bring back the settings in the Properties panel. Then from the drop-down, make sure that you select Reds. This is very important because if you make an adjustment while the master's range is active, you will adjust the entire image. Notice that when I select Reds, my prior adjustments are there, and I can continue adjusting the Hue, Saturation, or Lightness. In this case, the lightness slider is all you need since we only adjusted small areas without huge shifts in highlights or shadows. Next, I'll show you an advanced layer mask trick to target the highlights and shadows. I'm sure you'll love this technique. We'll use this photo of a tree, and the goal is to make the leaves purple. You could use the same technique as a previous example. First, we'll create a loose selection around the leaves. Select the lasso tool from the toolbar. Then freehand a selection around the leaves so that our adjustment doesn't affect the grass or other areas of similar color. With the selection active, create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Notice that my selection becomes a layer mask, and any adjustments I make will only affect the contents of the mask. Then enable the on image adjustment tool and click over the leaves. Photoshop will change the range to yellows. At this point, you can drag over the image to adjust the saturation. And if you hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac as you click and drag, you will adjust the hue. Set the hue to negative 140 and the saturation to negative 10. The problem now is that the lightness slider doesn't give us all the control we want. Let me show you how to create a mask that only affects the colors that change with this adjustment. Start by selecting the original layer and press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate it. Then you can place it on top of the layer stack. Here's a keyboard shortcut that I think you'll enjoy. Press Control and the right bracket key on Windows, that's Command and the right bracket key on the Mac, to jump the layer up in the layer stack. You can use this keyboard shortcut instead of dragging and dropping layers. Sometimes this is faster and more efficient. Then you can click on the Blending Mode dropdown and select Difference. The Difference Blending Mode makes the areas that were not affected by the adjustment black, and areas that change have a different color. This is a great way of visualizing exactly what pixels an adjustment layer affects. You can now create a layer mask based on the brightness of this image. To load the bright pixels as a selection, press Control, Alt, and the number 2 on Windows. That's Command, Option, and the number 2 on the Mac. By the way, I should mention that you may get a notification telling you that no pixel is over 50% selected. That's okay, no worries, Photoshop is just telling you that there is a selection there, but you can't see it. You can now delete this background copy, we don't need it anymore. With the selection still active, I'm going to create a Levels Adjustment Layer. Notice that in the Levels Adjustment Layer Mask thumbnail, you'll see the leaves and the affected areas. If you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the Mask thumbnail, you will see the mask. 
Remember, with a layer mask, white reveals and black conceals. The brighter areas of the mask are targeting the leaves and that's exactly what we want. I'll bring back the regular view by holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and clicking on the mask thumbnail. Then click on the layer thumbnail and from the properties panel, you can adjust the brightness accordingly using any of these five sliders. Now I'll show you one more advanced technique just in case you need it for your creative projects. This technique will help you with a lot more than changing colors in Photoshop. If you go into Window, Arrange, and select New Window 4 and the name of your open document, Photoshop will open this document in another window. This is not a duplicate document, this is the same document. Then you can go into Window, Arrange, to a vertical and Photoshop will place those two windows side by side. Click on the window to the right, then hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the Levels Layer thumbnail to see the mask view. Then go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and change the brightness of the mask. A brighter mask will reveal more of the adjustment and a darker mask will reveal less. And you can adjust this as you need. Notice that the mask changes on these areas and how it affects the corresponding areas on the actual image. We place the same document in two windows to see both the mask and the result simultaneously without having to apply the change and having to come back to make the adjustment. When you're done adjusting the mask, you can close either of the tabs and I'll click on the eye icon to see the before and I'll click again to see the after. Now let me show you how to change the color of a white or off-white background and we will use blending modes for that. First, you can create a solid color fill layer. Select the color that you would like the background to be. I'll make mine blue. I'll press OK. Next, you can right click on the layer mask and delete it. Then change the blending mode to multiply. Select the background image. From the select menu, choose subject to use artificial intelligence to automatically select the main subject. Then enable the color fill layer. Hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create an inverted selection. From here, you can always double click on the color fill layer thumbnail and change the color of the background to anything else that you want. And of course, you can always go back into the layer mask and make any adjustments that you need. By the way, make sure to check out my video on saturation versus vibrance to learn more about how color works in Photoshop. You can check it out here. Also, check out the MSI Creator Z16 laptop. The link is in the description. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for watching.